Ireland here on BBC One Northern Ireland now. An update on tonight's cases from Crime Watch. Welcome back. Well, I have to tell you, the phones have been red hot tonight, especially on our first appeal about serial killer Peter Tobin. After being convicted of the murder of teenager Dinah McNichol last week, detectives appealed for your help tonight to find out how many more women might have suffered a similar fate. A convicted sex offender has been found guilty of raping and murdering a Polish student in Glasgow. Peter Tobin has been charged with the murder of Vicky Hamilton, who went missing 16 years ago. The serial killer, Peter Tobin, is convicted of another murder. 18-year-old Dinah McNichol went missing in Essex in 1991. After all these years, we at last know the truth and justice has prevailed. Yes, he will rot in jail, but other victims' families, they need to know what happened to their child. This is a man who's over 60 that has two sentences in Scotland and a life tariff in England. He's holding dark secrets and he hasn't told us what these are. Detective Superintendent David Swindle is still here with your team. I said the phones have been red hot. Good calls? Phenomenal response. Phenomenal response on the phones and the internet. Fantastic the website news. for Crime Watch. Um, let's remind people then of the sort of areas that you were letting them know about that we didn't know about before with Peter Tobin. Yes, we, we mentioned earlier on about his connection with the, the sex industry and using people from the sex industry and the biker clubs. That is something we're still very, very keen to get information on. OK, you also have got, and we should remind people, that this is on the website, if they think that he's somebody that they might remember from the past, all of the photographs over the last few decades that show the change in the man as he ages, and also so many of these aliases as well, and details of uh, particularly notable jewellery, not the military stuff, but the stuff that's quite ornate. So all of that still open for information tonight. Yes, we've had a lot of good responses, and I would appeal to people with any bit of information, small piece of information, whatever, Log on to the website, okay. phone, whatever. OK, we're out of time. Thanks, Dave. Now, 15 years ago this week, mum of two, Tracy Mertens, was dragged from a house in Birmingham, blindfolded and thrown into the back of a car. She was driven to a village near Congleton in Cheshire, where she was burnt alive on the steps of a church. Oh, my God! <laughs> Anything. And I just want somebody out there just to help us. Anything. Well, DCI Paul Bailey is with me. A lot of calls on the car have come in, haven't they? Yes, we had a lot of calls about the car tonight. Two specific ones, sightings of the yellow escort on the day in question outside St Michael's Church at Eton. And I'd urge people, if you did see it, ring in. It's a very distinctive car. Now, one particular anonymous caller, you are desperate for that person to phone back in. Tell me more. That's right. Just before the programme finished at 10 o'clock, we had an individual call anonymously who gave us a name, a very specific name. We are interested for that person to ring us back. He also gave a reason as to why the murder had occurred. So we're very keen for that person to ring us back. OK, if you are that person, please call back in. Rav. Some good calls on CCTV already. Let's start with a Burton-on-Trent assault with this guy here. Floored a woman with a single punch. Five names put forward uh, in five calls, but the police are really excited about one of those, at least at the moment. St Albans designer clothes sees. We showed you these two well and truly caught on camera. We've had two names put forward for them already. And then the Canterbury cash scammers who stole from a pensioner. We've already had a name put forward for one of those. So a good night on CCTV. Now, three months ago on Friday, 18 September, football fanatic Aaron Hoff went for a drink at his local pub in Galley Common near Nuneaton. On his way home, he was mown down in a deliberate hit and run. And I, I looked up and I just seen um, a car Lloyds. I'm still laughing and joking. This is a split second, in other words, because I didn't know if it was a joke. <laughs> Don't mind me, bring it up. 
can remember lying on the ground and um, I couldn't breathe at first. I was like, really scared and like, I thought it was paralysed or something. DC Jenny Fallon is here. Good calls for you and your team? Yeah, loads of great calls. Lots and lots of calls about the courser. We still need some more calls about the girls, though. There's none of those coming in. OK, let's remind people then, those two girls entirely innocent of any crime just sitting in the back seat. Completely. What do you want to say to them? We just want them to come forward. They must have told somebody, family, friends, anybody who knows who they were in the back of the car, they've got to give us a ring. And it was so dramatic and such a horror story, they will not forget it. They know who they are. Yeah. They can be guaranteed confidentiality. Absolutely. Jenny, thanks very much. Now, every Christmas, Leslie and Graham Eaton sell Christmas trees from their farm in Dorset. They always loved their work, but last year the couple were targeted by a gang of armed robbers who seemed willing to stop at nothing to get what they wanted. Leslie, I'm just going to put this with the other seven oh, yeah, that's great. Well, that's a beauty, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I've been selling Christmas trees for about uh, 20 years, but here yeah, we've had a, a retail outlet for about eight years. So I got out of the chair and there was three blokes stood in front of me, dressed completely in black. The one in the middle just put a gun in my face. Where's the money? Where's the money? What money? We will put a bullet in her head unless you tell us where the money is. I can't breathe. And I was sort of crying and I just thought I'd take it one step further and I started breathing really heavily. They believed that I was going to have, you know, I did have a heart condition. Well, DCI Michael Marlin is with me. Uh, Michael, what came in? Uh, we've had a number of calls. Um, one particular significant call, which I'm very pleased about, um, somebody has suggested the identity of the large chap who was sat in the Ford Focus earlier that afternoon. Um, and we've got detectives back at Bournemouth who are following up those, uh, those leads now. So I'm very pleased about that. Now, one thing you didn't get a chance to talk about in the main appeal was his watch. Now, you think that might be significant, don't you? I do, yes. Mr Eaton was wearing an Aris watch, which is very unique. It had a very large bracelet attached because Mr Eaton's got very large hands. Um, that watch is unique and I'd like to appeal, if anybody's bought a watch like that or been offered a watch like that, I'd like them to come forward and give us a, you know, call us. Michael, thanks very much. Rav. Quick update for you on the faces. Let's start with Abdul Star Ismail, charged with rape that happened in Cardiff and then jumped bail. Already had 11 calls on him with information that's been passed to the police. Number three here, Ambrose O'Neill, wanted for armed robbery. He was given eight years, if you remember, uh, for the trial that he failed to turn up at. We've had three calls on him with some good sounding information. And then down here, number five, Mark Pong Slater, wanted for both drug offences and being on the run from prison. We've had a couple of possible sounding sightings of him too. Sounds like it's been a good night. You can find out all about tonight's cases on our website, of course, bbc.co.uk slash crimewatch. If you have been a victim of crime, then of course the victim support line is there for you, 0845 30 30 900. Crime Watch is going to be back in the new year, Wednesday, 27th of January. Do have a happy Christmas from all of us. Bye-bye.